Hi, Chris Good here, and we're going to uh, talk about the repeated measures analysis of variance. Last time we talked about the one-way independent groups analysis of variance, and we used these data here, uh, sort of adapted from the famous uh, Mozart effect paper uh, by Rasher, Sean, Kai, back from uh, 1993. Uh, anyway, we first considered this study as an independent groups design where different groups of people were listening to either silence or relaxation or Mozart. Uh, and in that case, we were interested in comparing the variability among the three treatment means, right, with the average variability within each treatment. And we ended up using a ratio of the variance among these three numbers to the average variance within each treatment group and we called that the F ratio. Um, we, uh, to calculate F, we first needed to get, excuse me, uh, we first needed to get the sum of the squared deviations uh, between treatments. Uh, that's a number that describes how different these three means across the bottom are from each other, 2.6, 3.6, and 4.8. Why are these numbers not the same? Well, for one thing, we treated them differently, right? The group with an average of 4.8 was listening to Mozart when they took their IQ test. The group listening to uh, Silence got a 2.6. So maybe one of the reasons the, these numbers are not the same is a treatment effect. But in an independent group design, these are different people. They're different people in each group, and so the fact that they're different people contributes, possibly, to the variability among the three group means. Also, other effects of random chance. So if you consider that um, people in the silence group, uh, one of them might have had you know, uh, uh, trouble with their car, ran out of gas on the way to the experiment, they were feeling pretty bad. One of the people in the Mozart group, just by a random effect of chance, might have watched Jeopardy the night before and gotten inspired or something and performed uh, better when otherwise they wouldn't have. Uh, so wh what are the three sources of variability among these three treatment means? Well. Possible treatment effect, uh, the fact that they're different people, and other effects of random chains. We also considered, in the independent groups ANOVA example, why the scores within a treatment group uh, were different from each other. Uh, and that can't possibly be because of an effective treatment, since people in the silence condition only experienced one treatment. Uh, so that can't be the case. But they are different people within the silence condition, right? Um, so that's one source of variability among these five numbers in the first column there, silence. Uh, and also random effects of chance. Other random effects of chance besides the fact that they're different people. So the person who scored a one might have, you know, uh, not had their coffee that morning. The per person who scored a five might have, um, you know, been inspired to do really well in the test. And, and so those are the two reasons why these numbers might be different from each other. And we uh, looked at the sum of squares within treatments as a way of measuring the variability, not just among the silence ones, but also among the relaxation scores within that treatment group and among the Mozart scores within that treatment group. So uh, we then went on to calculate the variance using this sum of squares um, for each one and then took the ratio of those variances or ratio of mean squares to calculate F. All right, so that's just a brief review. What if we had done this study and the way they actually did it, which was as a repeated measures design? So in this case, we still have the same measurements of variability, sum of squares between treatments, but now, why are these means different from each other? Maybe because of treatment, because these folks listen to Mozart and these folks listen to relaxation. Uh, the people in the first column, they listen to silence. But the fact that they're different people doesn't apply here anymore, because they're not different people. So I've listed uh, S1 through S5 here in the very first column to show you that uh, subject one, uh, when they were listening to silence, they scored a two. When that same person listened to relaxation, they would score a four, and they got a five under the Mozart condition. Similarly, subject number two here, participant number two, got a five under silence and six under relaxation. Seven under Mozart, and of course, we've appropriately counterbalanced these to avoid any types of carryover effects or progressive error, and so the study is not confounded, but it is a repeated measures design, which means that, the, that um, we cannot attribute 
the differences among these three means at the bottom, the treatment means, to individual differences, because they're not different individuals. They're the same people who listen to silence as relaxation as Mozart. Could a treatment effect still explain the difference among the three means? Of course. In fact, that's why we're doing the test to help us decide whether uh, that's really contributing here or not. Could other effects of random chance, like subject number four did very badly under the silence condition, is that because, uh, I don't know, <clears throat> the room was too hot or uh, they had a cramp or something? Eh, maybe so. So other effects of random chance still apply, but not the fact that they're different people because they're not different people anymore. Now, some scores within treatments doesn't change. It still measures the variability within each treatment group. And those three explain those two uh, sources of variability that we talked about before, the fact that they're different people, they still apply. Because in the silence condition just by itself, subject number one who scored a two is a different person than subject number two who scored a five. Also, effects of random chance. Other effects of random chance still apply because subject four here might have been looking out the window, whereas subject two might have been uh, paying attention and staying on task just because of a random effect of chance. All right. So we still use sum of scores within treatments to measure variability due to the fact that they're different people and due to other random effects of chance. But I've put something here in the final column, which are subject means. So these are means for each participant in the study. So 3.67, that's the average performance of participant number one, S1. Uh, three down here at the bottom is the average performance of participant S5, subject number five down here at the bottom, number three. Why are the subject means different from each other? Well, it's not because of treatment, because we've averaged across all three of these treatments. It's also a lot less, if not, not at all, due to effects of random chance. Because while participant number four, S4 down here, might have been distracted and performed badly under the silence condition, uh, they did well under, under the Mozart condition, and we've averaged out effects of random chance that might have caused a difference in that participant's behavior. What remains to explain why the average performance of the participants, right, as displayed by these subject means, uh, what explains their variability? What's left to explain why these numbers are different from each other? The only thing that's left is the fact that people are different. These are different people. These are averages from different people, averaged across treatment, averaged across other effect of random chance. They're different people. And we're going to measure this variability, right? Uh, with the sum of squares between subjects. To do that, we're going to need a new calculation, new formula, and you'll find this very similar to the sum of squares between treatments formula. To calculate sum of squares between treatments, we needed the t totals. Remember, we squared those, divided by the number within each group, and then subtracted g squared over n after we summed all of these up. We're going to do the same thing for sum of squares between subject, except we're going to use the p totals instead of t totals. We're, it's as though we're calculating sum of squares between treatments with subject as a treatment. And that makes more sense when we take a closer look at the formula. And here's the formula. Sum of squares between subjects is equal to the sum of each p total squared divided by the number of groups that you have minus g squared over n. Let's take a look at the p totals again. So here it would be 11 squared over k, right? The number of groups that you have, 1, 2, 3. So 11 squared over 3 plus 18 squared over 3 plus 10 squared over 3. You see where I'm going with this? So I'm summing the p squares for each participant, their participant total squared, divided by the number of groups, which is k. Now, so we'll do 11 squared over 3 plus 18 squared over 3 plus 10 squared over 3, plus 7 squared over 3, plus 9 squared over 3, and then of course remembering to subtract g squared divided by the total of all of the scores. So that's sum of squares between subjects. And that's our measurement of variability due to the fact that these subject means 
came from different people. Now, we have a measurement of variability due to treatment and to effects of random chance. Right? We need something, that's the numerator of our F ratio for the repeated measures analysis of variance, sum of squares between treatments. We need to compare that to something that makes sense. Sum of squares within treatments measures variability due to the fact that people are different and effects of random chance. Sum of squares between subjects, and I just introduced you to the com computational formula for that, measures variability due to the fact that people are different. So if we remove variability due to the fact that there are different people in the form of sum of squares between subjects from our estimate of variability due to the fact that people are different and effects of random chance, what we're left with is sum of squares error. And that represents a measurement of variability due to random chance alone. It's after you remove variability due to the fact that people are different from sum of squares within treatments. So SS error is equal to SS within treatments minus SS between subjects. And we use SS error to calculate MS error. We do that by dividing by degrees of freedom for error. Well, how, how do we get that? Well, just as we've arrived at the sum of squares for error, our measurement of variability due to random chance alone, through subtraction of SS within treatments minus SS between subjects, we'll do degrees of freedom for error the same way. Degrees of freedom within treatments minus degrees of freedom between subjects. We already know that degrees of freedom within treatments is uh, big N minus K, right? Well, what's degrees of freedom between subjects? It's simply the number of subjects that you have minus one. So we'll see in our calculation that D of error equals big N minus K, and that's in parentheses, minus, in parentheses, little n minus one. D of within treatments minus D of between subjects. So once we divide sum of squares error by degrees of freedom for error, we have our denominator term for the repeated measures F. Instead of dividing MS between treatments by MS within treatments, we're using a smaller value. We're using MS error because that's what's left over after we've removed variability due to the fact that they're different people. Okay, so here's how your textbook outlines it. For the repeated measures ANOVA, we have total variance. Let's go back a few slides. Look at the data. All right. Here are our data, and we have variability among all 15 of these numbers here. There's 15 different scores. And that total variance we can divide into between treatments variance, which is due to possibly a treatment effect, and in a repeated measures design, the only other source of variability is other effects of random chance, not individual differences. That within treatments variance still consists of individual differences plus other effects of random chance. But we subtract that, right, because we have between subjects variance, which is made up of individual differences. And once we remove that variance between subjects from variance within treatments, what remains is error variance. Variability uh, that we can attribute to error or effects of random chance alone, excluding individual differences. And it's degrees, the degrees of freedom for error that we use in the F table to look up our critical value. Why? because the error term is now no longer MS within treatments. We're going to use the degrees of freedom that correspond to our new denominator, MS error, DF error, that we calculated by subtraction earlier. So remember that when you're looking up your critical value. That's why the table says degrees of freedom in the numerator above and degrees of freedom in the denominator down this column on the left-hand side. 
So I have another example right here, and this is how we'll set up a repeated measures ANOVA that we'll solve in a separate video that I'll post um, alongside this one. In this study, we have five different participants again, but we have four different treatment levels where we're comparing uh, placebo treatment with three different drugs, drug A, B, and C. And we're going to do this in a repeated measures design so that each one of these five different participants, subjects A, B, C, D, and E, experience all four conditions of the study. Now, we'll counterbalance it appropriately so that none of the carryover effects or progressive error can influence the outcome. I've given you treatment totals here across the bottom, and I've calculated the sum of squares within each treatment group, so it should be pretty easy to sum up to get sum of squares within treatment. You won't have to calculate that on your own. So for the ANOVA, we could do this. We could do the sum of squares total, right? For just add up all the squared scores, subtract the square of the sum of the scores, divided by big N. We uh, could get SS within treatments by just adding up the sum of squares within each treatment group, 8 plus 8 plus 6 plus 10. We can get the degrees of freedom within treatments by summing the degrees of freedom within each one. So we have 5 minus 1 is 4 different scores for 4 different treatments, right, for a total of 16. You can also do it this way. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 scores for 4 different treatments, or a total of n equals 20 different scores minus 1, 2, 3, 4 treatments, so that's big N minus K, 16 minus 4 is 12. I'm sorry, that's 20 minus 4 is 16. Let me repeat that once more. We have uh, 20 different scores, we have 4 different groups, big N minus K is equal to 16. All right. To get the sum of the squares between, between treatments, it's the same as it ever was. So you do the t squared over n minus g squared over big N. And the degrees of freedom between treatments now is we have four different treatments minus one is three degrees of freedom for the numerator term. All right. For the rest of the problem, we're going to need our subject totals, our participant totals. So we have a 20. I'm just summing across each of the four treatments for participant A. 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 6 is 13 plus 7 is 20. 0 plus 3 plus 3 is 6 for subject B. Plus 6 is 12, and so on and so forth. So sum of squares between subjects is calculated this way. We'll sum the squares of those P totals that I just showed you, divided by K, divided by the number of groups that we have, that's 4, minus G squared over N. And that's sum of squares between subjects. Again. Watch the video where I solve this problem, right, with the, with the, uh, the drug treatment, four levels of drug treatment uh, in that separate video. Sum of scores for error, then, once we do sum of scores between subjects, we'll get by subtraction. We already summed up our sums of squares within each group to get sum of scores within treatments. We would then subtract sum of squares between treatments that I just calculated to get sum of squares for error. Divide by DF error, and I showed you how to do that before. It's big N minus K, in parentheses, minus, in parentheses, little n, minus 1. That's the between treat, sorry, I'm, that's the between subjects error. Um, the, there's, a, there's an error here. It says DF, with, DF error is not DF within treatments minus DF between treatments. It's DF within treatments minus DF between subjects. And let's go ahead and fix that. Um, and y you should see it in the, the um, demonstration in just a moment. Finally, uh, MS error will calculate as sum of squares error over degrees of freedom error. And uh, again, we're splitting this total variance into between treatments variance, and instead of using within treatments variance, we're subtracting out between subjects variance from that within treatments variance to yield error variance. Finally, uh, in the regular ANOVA, we compared MS between treatments to MS within treatments. For the repeated measures ANOVA, we'll calculate F as the mean squared between treatments to the mean square error. 
check out that video where I solved this whole problem, and uh, you should be able to do this on your own. See you next time.